Welcome to Thrive Radio. I'm your host, Amy Montgomery, entrepreneur and digital marketing agency owner. Today, my guest is Jason Dennis. He's the driving force behind Nexium Strategies with over 18 years of experience in the construction industry and a background as a framer and drywaller. Jason has a unique perspective on industry challenges. He excels in digital marketing solutions like SEO, email marketing, and social media tailored for both commercial and residential sectors. Grounded in core values of community integrity and professionalism, dedication, and respect shaped by Jason's six years in the military, Nexum Strategies transforms businesses and forges lasting partnerships. Jason, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So yeah. Introduction when you read it. <laughs> I love to have other marketers in other spaces on my podcast because it's, I feel like whenever we say digital marketing, it's such a mystery to so many people, <laughs> right? Yeah, it is. People often think immediately, oh, social media. That's like the number one thing that everybody assumes digital marketing is. There's actually a lot more to it than just that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's one person's job. <laughs> <laughs> The whole, whole different section. Amongst 70, <laughs> can you share a little bit of your background and what led you to focus on the intersection of construction and technology and also like the digital marketing aspect? Yeah, actually, so construction was, construction was my first love. And I started construction back in 2010. That was really my first, I wouldn't say first, but no, I just, that's when I really started getting into the work of it. I started in the field working as a carpenter, as a labor. I dabbled in each of the trades and that's really what, what built that foundation for me loving this industry so much. And then once I got older and started actually applying a career was at steady jobs, I ended up moving into operations and that's where I learned how to market construction businesses. And I really, really fell in love with that. Not only because I was out of the hot sun here in Vegas, I was inside the office and I got to learn what kind of grows the business from the inside out. And I just, it, it gave me this perspective of working hard in the field. And then being able to go in the back office and say, okay, what are these campaigns doing? How are we reaching new customers? What's going on? Understanding both of those aspects of it just really opened my eyes. And it laid the groundwork for me wanting to stay in this industry so long and develop my own business, helping out other owners. Because I've seen so many different aspects of different construction companies. If there's plumbers, there's electricians, there's HVAC, and you know, so it's just it's nice knowing that I can jump into any of those industries or any of those specific skills and help those companies grow. Yeah, I love that. And they're pretty unique in that, especially like HVAC, when people need you, they need you now. So you've got to be on top of Google <laughs> at all times. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 24 hour emergency service, especially where I'm at here in Vegas. It's, if you're missing out on those 24 hour calls, because in the summertime here, that is the absolute business time for HVAC customers, not even just HVAC, but plumbers as well. So there's, if you're not up within those, at least the first five results, you're potentially missing out on anywhere from 20 to 25 customers a month. Yeah, it's amazing. So uh, in the construction industry specifically, a lot of people really rely on referrals and are slow to grasping on to digital marketing. Why do you think this is and what impact does it have on newer companies? It's a very good question. And it's, it relates to the construction industry as a whole. So I don't know for whatever reason it is, um, but the construction industry is slow to adapt to anything, um, whether it's new equipment, new tools, or new processes to, to manage their operations. Um, they've just always been really slow. At, and I think a lot of that is because of the referrals. Construction industries, I've seen businesses that are 20 years old that have just built their legacy on strictly referrals. And that's really great that some companies can do that, but they get too comfortable on that. And I think that they're always expecting that referral wave to, to carry them throughout their duration of their career. And then eventually that referral wave starts to tap out. And then they can get stuck because they haven't put any efforts in staying relevant in the digital world where everybody nowadays is, that's where they look to build trust or look for trust in their, who they're going to do service with or business with. They look to see if they're, they're relevant. So it's just trying to move more businesses away from just relying on the referral base because it does tap out eventually. And it's just weird. I don't know why, what the stigma is for, for slow adaption. If yeah. it's a lot of, a lot of construction companies, owners, they have this mentality. If it's don't, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So <laughs> I think that's part of the problem. Yeah. But it's interesting because I experienced that in the service-based industry as well. And as I just switched my entire niche focus for that reason, 
Now I still work with service-based professionals and people, even in my transition, they're like, no, wait. <laughs> but I, what I found is like the people that, that I ended up working with anyway, were those that either really wanted to grow on social media or they needed a massive amount of leads. Mm -hmm. um, but I found the same thing where there was a mental, almost a mental disconnect. I think it has to do with the, like that buzzword digital marketing. Because there was almost this mental disconnect of I'm on LinkedIn and LinkedIn's not social media. Like mm. I actually had somebody say, I'm not on social media. I'm like, you're on LinkedIn. And they're <laughs> like, that's social media? I'm like, yeah, that's social media, right? They don't associate, I don't think LinkedIn is a social media platform. They don't see it as a place to drive traffic to their website. They see it as a place to go and it's a brick wall. You either connect with somebody on there or it feels like a brick wall you can't break through and you've got to do like the automations or the whatevers. And yeah, so it's really interesting. And I, at one point I said this, this one woman that I had met with, she was like, she said the same thing about the social media. I thought social media was just, or she says, I thought that digital marketing was just social media. And I said, oh no, it is marketing on the internet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anything, your website, anything that is on the internet, right? Basically from email to who knows, whatever. If it's on the internet, that's digital marketing. So, any digital aspect. Yeah, any digital aspect. So yeah, I think it, it's interesting how there's that misconnect of how you connect with people and how you, and they're not on the internet. Like my ideal clients, I'm like, do they use Google? <laughs> yeah, that's a good right. one. How do they find you that if they're not on the internet? How do they call yeah. it? Where's your number located? On the internet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They got to find you somehow. The construction companies in that struggle without having that strong referral base, what are alternatives do you help them with to gain visibility and credibility? Yeah, so I'm a big proponent of community marketing and like setting up local events that or sponsored by that particular company or whichever client I'm working with. There's several ways to do this for free. And I think the biggest issue is that people are just afraid to ask. I, and I think it's funny because everybody has, especially in the construction industry, there's this mentality of, it's me, I got to do it myself. I'm running the company. It has to be done by me. When in reality is if you just ask somebody, they'll more than likely help you out. And you don't have to, it's not like a big ask, but it's a, you're creating a win situation. So for example, I have a painter that I work with in Florida. And we organized a whole, basically a little meet and greet for the community he, he lives in and for a couple of businesses that he's really fond of. And all of us, we just went and asked the business, hey, we want to put on an event. Would you be interested in sponsoring maybe a portion of food or can we use your space to have the event here? And then customers who are, or whoever comes to the event can buy from you. So you, know, you create a win situation and that helps build community trust, helps build relevancy because people who don't know who you are start to know who you are and think, oh, this person put on this event for us to come and meet him. And now that we think about it, we actually do need a house painted. So it's good that we met him. And then they, it puts a name to the brand and a face to the business name. So that, I'm a huge proponent of community marketing. I think that step forward is a good way to not only build the referral base, but it gets your name out there in a different way as opposed to if you're not heavily on social media, if you're not heavily reliant on digital marketing, it's just being creative, how you get your name out there. Yeah. I love that too, because a lot of people don't think that would be connected to marketing. Right. And yeah, but if you do an event, maybe you're going to put it on a Facebook event. Maybe you're going to put it on a LinkedIn event. Maybe you're going to put it out there on Eventbrite. People can actually attend. And that again is digital marketing. And I just wanted to po point that out because I just feel like there's so many people that don't really understand that you can put something up like that and drive the awareness to get the right people there. People don't often think about these other avenues and it just, you wouldn't be surprised how many owners and not just from the construction industry, but a few other businesses that have reached out to me just to explore the services. It's crazy how little people actually have an understanding of what encompasses digital marketing. Whether it's, like you said, something as simple as putting an event out, they think, oh, I'll just post it on Facebook and that'll be it. No, you have all these other channels to put this on. You can really spread the word for this and get the turnout you want. Whereas there's other people who just focus on one, let's say they do one, one post a week on Instagram and it's like, oh, I only had 25 people show. It's because you only posted to your one audience. 
you yeah. know, they really don't consider the other options. And it's, uh, it's just funny to me that. Yeah. yeah. And there's, there's so many happening. networking groups, even on, if you go on say Facebook and so many community groups and things, and you can ask people to share it out and so many ways to provide. Um, and some of that, you know, it's, it's more of the manual organic stuff, but it still works. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and that, that, and that's the other thing. Like I had somebody that came to me and said, I have a, okay. So I have a list of all of these business owners I want to work with, what's the next step? And I was like, pick up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Because they, they think that somehow like digital marketing is somehow going to just, you can run cold emails. You can find them on LinkedIn and send them a, a connect, or you can pick up the phone and call them or send them a letter. But I think that it marketing should lead to a relationship and it should uh, reach that, that community event. It should turn into something that is deeper right oh, yeah so, absolutely versus i'm just going to create social media and collect followers right <laughs> yes absolutely. Yeah. what are some examples that you've seen where digital marketing has transformed businesses in the construction industry definitely for i'll use that painter as an example but also a plumber here uh, in vegas that i work with they were having a really hard time getting steady consistent clients and one of the biggest changes was just improving the rankings of their Google profile. And this is one of the most overlooked things by any business really is their, their Google profile. They do a really good job at pushing out, okay, leave us a review on Google, leave us a review on Google, but they don't know why they're asking for the review. And I think once a company owner understands, okay, the, imbu- the reviews are important to help us rank, and they understand, okay, if we do regular updates on our Google business profile, if we add in these, these little buzzwords and understand what they are for, that can be a game changer for a lot of these SMEs or these privately owned small business construction firms, plumbers, electricians, like HVAC. I think that's been the biggest significant change and, and giving those results to them has been awesome because we, it's the first thing we tackle every time. We'll go to the Google business profile because if we can immediately start getting them three to five new clients per month just from Google alone, they're super ecstatic about that. And I think that's the biggest aspect of digital marketing that they neglect because like we said earlier, Everyone's oh, well, I have social media and I have this many followers. And it's like, that doesn't mean they're your clients. They're just there because they like some of the stuff you put out, but they just happen to something you posted resonated with them and they happen to follow. Them. Yeah. So that's the biggest aspect for sure is that just teaching people how to transform their Google profile because that can lead to steady, consistent client flow and that can you know, snowball into other aspects. Hey, now we can run meta ads, or now you can do a little bit more investing into your Google ads. There are over 700 construction technologies. What are some of the most innovative technologies you've seen recently and have how they've made a significant impact? I absolutely love this question because I wholeheartedly see that these two technologies are going to be the next evolution of marketing for construction companies, and that's VR and AR, so virtual reality and augmented reality. And it's basically coupled with 360 capture, which is construction companies, landscapers, home remodelers, kitchen remodelers, bathroom models are able to basically map out their client's home. And then they can have their client put on these goggles and they can see their entire space, change out all the cabinets, change out all the countertops, recreate the space to what they want to see using real life products and real life features or construction equipment. Whatever the case is, it can create that image beforehand, and then it, the companies can use that to market and say, well, we can come in and show you in real life what it's going to look like in your space, what you would look like standing in your space after the remodel. And I think not only that's going to be a huge selling point, but just being able to market that and say, hey, we don't have to have a contractor come out to your house. Just take your phone, take 360 pictures of your living room that you want done and send it to us, and we'll send you a quick VR video of what your home can look like. So that's going to, it's going to be, I've already seen it on a couple of places. I think a couple of landscapers in Texas uh, that I've read about have this, are using this technology to do landscape features. And it's amazing. Like it absolutely, it just the, the client pathway to becoming a client is significantly shortened and they're able to increase the sales. They're able to actually use this effectively to get people's attention. Like, Hey, so-and-so just bought their dream yard and they didn't even have to dig anything up yet. They can see it beforehand and then choose everything down to the flower pot. So I love that. Yeah. Being able to see that transformation. Mm -hmm. 
So and it might even apply just to the construction world. There's even for e-commerce, when you're jumping into that, having people be able to, with their phone, look and see, oh, this is what this desk is going to look like here. Or this is what this vase is going to look like, or this lamp. It's going gonna, it's gonna to slowly start to improve e-commerce. It'll go, people are selling courses, or I'm sure there's some way to do VR courses where they can put you in a classroom. Hey, it's one-on-one, -on -one, just the two of us in a classroom, not just a Zoom call, but they probably see other students. There's quite a bit of possibilities with it. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Okay. So if there's a construction company or somebody that is in that industry and they're new to the whole digital marketing thing, mm -hmm. what are some basic steps that they can start to take to leverage the tools effectively? Yeah, absolutely. So I like to start them, the very simplest to me is, is social, uh, excuse me, social media. It's free. It's low cost and it's really, once you understand the basics, it's super easy to master. So teaching somebody how to understand using relevant hashtags for their posts to get their posts noticed by the people they want to see. And then just something simple, keeping your descriptions. You can use a couple of keywords, just mimic your hashtags. It's just simple things. Like if you have a hashtag, oh, kitchen remodel, then make sure in your description, you want to talk, hey, we just did this kitchen remodel out in whatever location you're in. Um, so just you know, really starting at the very basic level of social media and then driving home that consistency is going to help you out in the long, you know, being sure that you're posting at least three to five times a day or three times, or excuse me, three to five times a week or three times a week, just something to start building that kind of trust and then slowly hitting in the followers. And then from there, after they get the social media and hang of things, that'd be leveraging Facebook groups going into local communities, like you mentioned earlier, and taking advantage of posting in some content there and just asking the community, hey guys, what do you look for when you're finding a contractor? We look for when you're finding a plumber or what do you look for whatever service? Just starting at the very level, the very lowest level, and then you know, actually engaging with the audience early on or your potential clients is going to be huge. And that's the very basic steps I would take. And then lastly would be the Google profile again, making sure that's set up correctly. From the very beginning, your service hours are updated, the contact information is here. If you have any links, hyperlinks to other social media profiles, making sure everything's accessible. What about those that are hesitant about new technologies and anything? They see, they see Maybe they hear the word digital marketing and they're like, oh, it freezes them up. What would you, what advice would you give to them? Yeah, I get that a lot, especially in this particular industry. And it's actually one of the biggest hurdles I have to face like each time I talk to somebody new, a potential prospect or partner, it's really is a buzzword. It's a huge turnoff of a buzzword, digital marketing. You know, I don't know if, I don't know if it's because of how things are slow moving in the industry or if it's because previous digital marketers have just left a bad taste in, in the industry's mouth. But every time I speak with somebody, whether it's before I'm seeing if they're a potential prospect or not, or just having a conversation. More often than not, I find that companies have gotten burned or have had really bad results with digital marketing agencies. Now, I don't, it seems to me that the problem is that most digital marketers, if they don't understand the construction industry, they're probably not going to do a good job of marketing the business unless it's something more technical, SEO or fixing the Google profile. But there's other things within this industry. You have to market a specific way and you have to understand how the industry fluctuates. And I think if you don't understand that, it's hard for you to help a business grow through marketing, especially in this, in this industry. But yeah. my advice to them, and every time I tell them this, is you have to learn what you're spending your money on. Because there's two reasons why people hire a marketing agency. It's one, they don't have the time to do the marketing. Or two, they don't know how to do it themselves. They don't have the team or anybody on there to, shoot, to show, hey, this is what we need to do. So there's always those two reasons. And more often than not, it's because they don't know. That's what I find to be the more common issue is they don't know. So they just hire someone to do it, but because they don't know it results in them getting taken advantage. So my biggest advice is just take the time and learn enough to understand, okay, if someone, if I hire someone to do SEO, these are the results that ex I should expect. And this is what I should look for. Cause whenever we work with a person or one of our partners, we provide them an SEO report. So every single week along each of their digital assets we'll go through and we'll document every single word every keyword every research every backlink everything that was put on there and we'll show that to them so you can follow, they can follow along with us and you know, see that the work we're doing 
So I think as an owner, as in any construction company, just take the time and at least learn enough that you understand each role of digital marketing. So if you hire someone to manage your social media content, you should understand how hashtags work. You should understand the right copyright and to use in the description. You should understand how important the thumbnails are and you should understand when and where to post. So if you're posting on Instagram, YouTube, and then the same thing for your Google business profile, you should understand why that's important. You should understand enough to know regular updates, doing SEO in the Google business profile for local, for local marketing, local SEO, how important that is. Just take the time and, and, and know what you're spending your money on and why. So what do you think has been your truth that's gotten you this far in your journey? It's a really good question. I think it's, I think it's just staying authentic to the industry. I think having a deep care for the industry has really helped me out a lot. I, to be honest with you, I wasn't anticipating having, I'm, I'm doing pretty decent for only being around for a year and a half. And I wasn't anticipating doing that off the bat. I was really anticipating, I don't know, like two years of struggle and just famine. Yeah. But I just, I think having that, that background of coming from working in the field, spending 115 degree days in the summer building houses or commercial buildings and just really having that connection and understanding to the industry and just staying true to what the industry is and how it's helped me through all these years. I think that's been pivotal in, in understanding the problem areas that other construction owners face and seeing it firsthand. There was plenty of times for where companies I was with where we always hit that slope. There's always a slowdown for construction companies. So just navigating that and just really having that understanding has definitely been you know, the truth that's, that's kept me this successful so far. Yeah, I love that. If you were able to give yourself one piece of advice when you first started out on your journey, what would it be? Learn to sell. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, uh, definitely learn to sell. Um, I'm, I'm very confident in my abilities and I know what I can do will actually make a difference with the companies that I work with. But the issue is I was so focused on on giving and understanding and, Hey, I, I've been in the situation. I know I've worked firsthand with, with plenty of owners and I've helped them and I can help do the same. I was just so eager to get them show results. That I often just forget that I need to make a sell, <laughs> but it was just, and I would try and give them results. I was so focused on helping and I still do this. Now I share conversations with a lot of owners and I just set up the calls. I give them a you know, free strategy session. I'll go through and kind of tell them like, Hey, if you fine tune this by doing this, you give this information to your team, have them make the tweaks and let me know the results. And then I was really focused on doing that at first that I forgot to sell to people. I would just go in and be like, Hey, yeah, thanks for taking the time to call. I'm super excited to talk to you. I would give them a list, help them out with the strategy. And then like, yeah, no pressure, man. Talk to you later. And I'm like, wow, I probably should have closed that guy. <laughs> <Should've>. <laughs> but it is, you live in your life, but definitely yeah, just, just ask for this. Sell. Try and make the sell. Obviously don't. I don't like to use under the table sales tactics or anything. And I really do want to help, but that's been the biggest, the, that'd be the biggest advice is just make the sell. Yeah. I love that too. I think that I've been guilty of that. And I've talked to so many others that, that want to solve the problems that struggle with that too. And I always say, I learned this from actually a woman that, that trained me in selling products. And she said she was a millionaire and I wanted to learn from her. And so then I went on to sell $5 million worth of product because of her. And she said, facts, tell, story, sell. And when I would go out and I do a presentation about my products, I noticed that when I was get, geeking out about the science of things and the technical this, the technical that, nobody really cared. But then when I hit the testimonies and I'm like, and I'm thinking nobody cares about the stupid testimony. I'm just, they're like, hey, what, what's the testimony? And mm -hmm. I started to realize, oh, wow, that's the number one thing that people love. And so now whenever I want to help and solve, which is my, my, my baseline, I say to myself, I think to my, I pause and I think, okay, what story can I tell? Because then it's the story of the transformation for, versus giving information. And it, I think it, people receive it better too. But yeah, I, I love couldn't that. agree more with that. Couldn't agree more with that. Actually, it's funny you said it because before I um, just started working with one of uh, a different partner based out of Georgia, one of the things I told him was I noticed right off the bat you his Google profile was very weak. And I just showed him the results from my my painter in Florida who's crushing it, and he was like, "Yes, I that's what I want. I want I want that." And I honestly don't think if I didn't have that example or if I didn't have that testimonial to be able to show him, yeah, we're getting him steady three to five calls a month now, that he probably wouldn't have been on board because he was one of these he was one of these gentlemen that had a bad run in with a previous marketer and was taken advantage of. So 
I yeah. couldn't agree. Definitely testimonial storytelling is, is what sells. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, and there are, I want to say too, there are some really large, I won't say, I won't name names, but there are some really large marketing agencies that purposely do just a massive amount of sales and they do not care about results. So I think, no, I think you 100%. know, yeah. So a lot of people were like, I paid thousands and thousands of dollars for this big agency and they didn't get me any results. And yeah, because that's all they do is just sell. So Jason, if there's somebody that's listening that would love to work with you, what's the best way to contact you? Definitely LinkedIn, because before you do decide to contact me. LinkedIn will give you a really good background into my, or idea into my background. I have a lot of projects out there that I work with. I try and showcase everything as transparent as I can. And I think that's, that'll probably be the best way. LinkedIn, send me a message. My contact info is on there as well. But that way, if you are even a little bit curious, you can just go there and say, oh, he does have the work up here that he's working with. There's one of my clients is such a big fan that he comments on everything I do. <laughs> Every time I post, he's always, yes, this guy helps me out. So <laughs> it's a good place to go and check it out. Thank I you. love that. Perfect. I'll put your links down below. Thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your expertise. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. This is great. I actually wanted to say thank you for doing this because there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of people doing podcasts. So it's where they like to bring on starters or startup companies or entrepreneurs that are on the journey. There's not many people doing that. It's, it's great that you're doing it. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for coming on. And if you're listening, you want more information about this podcast and upcoming shows, you can visit a call to thrive.com. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful week.